Is there? Go we'll we'll call the meeting to order. I told him you better. <laughs> Okay, we only have one matter on for this uh, variance request. All right, good evening, board. Tonight's Board of Adjustment hearing has one case. Tonight's case is 2021 SW0002. This is at 2872 Springfield Court, Elon, uh, pin number 884-774-3372. This is a single family residential detached development on 0.51 acres. Uh, there is no overlay here, no watershed to speak of. Action requested tonight by the applicant, Mr. Dearman. The applicant's requesting consideration for a waiver of the side setback requirement of 10 foot so he can be build a two car garage on his property, be seven foot from the property line. Uh, you have in your packet the setback requirements and the unified development ordinance that shows you the 10 foot requirement. Um, part of the uh, UDO speaks to waivers and am amendment procedures. So waivers are site conditions where because of nature, features, or other existing physical conditions peculiar to the site, compliance with the standards or requirements in this section would cause an unusual and unnecessary hardship to the subdivider. All right. Waivers may be permitted provided that such waivers will not have the effect of nullifying the purpose of these regulations. That's actually quoted straight out of our ordinance. You have the uh, waiver request from the applicant and following that. You also have um, a letter from Mr. Dearman himself speaking to his request. You have an aerial photography of the property and where it sits. Um, which we can bring maps up for that should you need that. You also have where he submitted for plan review to the building inspections department and he did get plan review passed for the structure meeting building code for the state. You've got a, a letter as well from the architect who designed the um, building itself, speaking to his specific case. You have a um, letter from Appendix C being from his neighbor as well. Uh, Appendix D is showing you he's drawn out where this garage should be and he's got his uh, well aseptic permit shown for you all. And then part of what I've included is the original plat for the subdivision that shows you all the lots including his and how they all lay out. Then you've got, it's a little bit blurry when you zoom in but I have zoomed into his specific lot so you can see those details. You then have uh, the deed showing him being the owner and latter part of your packet is showing you the quasi-judicial hearing notice that was published just to say that we met we did the notice in the paper we mailed uh, certified mail to adjoining property owners and the property owner himself notice of the hearing we also posted the property these are all things legally required for these types of hearings uh, mr dearman did get a copy of your agenda packet that is also required by law when you all got it you also have um, a variance procedure guidance sheet that tonight will show you what you're looking at and you also got a memorandum on the front of your packet uh, provided by the planning department of things that you're looking for in these evidentiary hearings for us tonight the property is shown as needing to meet natural features or existing physical conditions peculiar to the site compliance with the standards and requirements of the section would cause an unusual and necessary hardship to the subdivider and that waivers may be permitted if you do so. In this property, there are a couple different options for where um, a actual garage of the size that he is looking for can go. Uh, planning board has recommended denial of this request based on opportunities that can be reached on this property that would not cause hardships or unusual circumstances and still could have Mr. Dearman's garage placed on his property even on the same side of the property, if design was pushed a little bit further back or some modifications made, that garage could still go on this property. Um, should this garage go in as drawn with the adjusted setback that creates a hardship getting to what he is showing you as his septic system in the rear of the property, going around the opposite side of the house could actually cause problems to any, do any repair on septic. These were things that were discussed during planning board meeting. Um, and the, like I said, the design on the garage itself was discussed during planning board to say that an 
alternative design that still met what he's looking for, but maybe pushed back a little bit to where his property gets a little bit wider. Those types of things were discussed at the planning board meeting. So planning board and staff are recommended denial of the request, seeing as there's other opportunities on the property. Um, legal has given you your packet for a guidance sheet. And those are, that's an opportunity for you to keep notes on what is said tonight by Mr. Dearman and myself uh, to give you guidance on what can be done at the end of the meeting. If you have questions for me or for the applicant itself, it would be appropriate to have him present his case. So did you say setting it back yes, cause a problem on, with the septic system? It could be, cause a problem getting to a, the rear septic system to do repairs or such. By setback, you mean pushing it further back right. on the existing structure? Where on the existing lot, if you push it back, uh, I don't know that anybody had an exact measurement, but somewhere in less than 10 foot measurement, because there's a distance you have to stay from that septic system, but ideally pushing it back a little bit where his lot gets a little bit wider, he could meet setbacks at that point and wouldn't need a waiver. Mr. Scott, I have one procedural question. Uh, the documentation that she's referred to, is that to be considered as evidence? The agenda packet? Correct. Yes, as long as it's been introduced and discussed, it can be evidence as uh, relied on by the board. All right. And Ms. Collar, are you introducing that as evidence? Or? I am. Everything I've introduced and said, I would like for the record. Mm -hmm. All right. Can we ask a question? I've got a question. Do we know why? Just a curiosity. Do we know why the, the house is so far to one side of the property already? Is there a drain issue or something to the to looking from facing out to the cul-de-sac? Is there? A, I see the drain field flows back to the left of the property. I would say for me that'd be a question for the owner. And yes, there is. There's a well, we don't. You can't see topographically what the lay of the land is. So. Sure. Um, Ms. Connell, yeah. is, that, is that all you plan to present at this point? Yes, sir. All right. Would you identify yourself, give your address? Yes, I'm James Dearman. I live at 2872 Springfield Court in Elon. Um, the, to answer your question, yes, it is. It's the lay of the land, the lay back of the land. If you push the uh, garage back, then it's going to, there, there's a higher pitch there. That's and what you I was see, thinking based on it is. what I was seeing where the house was placed. Okay. When I was looking at when they was uh, submitted this about uh, pushing it back, that was I looked at it and no, it, it ain't going to work because it's going to be too high there, and plus it would block the the back part portion of the house, like where I got it laid out and right. st status and so forth. And to ask about the septic tank. Um, I measured the hose to get to the septic tank from from the uh, back, from the front of my garage. It's nothing but like like 78 feet from the pit where if it had to be uh, pumped out, the truck could actually back up and not go to the back of the of the premises if it had some kind of thing. Now, if there was an issue with uh, some kind of problem, a major problem, then it's going to go around back. You know, you have to go around back anyway. Uh, so looking at this area, the garage would extend somewhat beyond, I guess, the edge of the driveway because you have to have yes, room sir. to get the cars yes. in there. Yes, sir. Now you're looking at a two-car garage. Yes, sir. I see a note in here from Mr. Sniper. Sniper. James Sniper. Yes, that's the. Is he here? No, I think so. no. He might be ten. And he's, as far as he's concerned, and this is your neighbor to your right. Yes, sir. And he's saying that it's okay with him that we, if, if this is approved. Yes, sir. Him and his wife. So it's the only problem we have, we as in the planning board, the easement, is that the issue? It's a 10 foot setback. Right. Right. Because um, your neighbor doesn't have a problem with that, right? No, ma'am. And if you push that back then there, me and Commissioner Lashley are septic tank czars. We have been all over this county looking at not so good septic tanks that have had some problems where they've been placed. I don't want you to be in that position because it will be the start of your nightmare. Right. So um, Absolutely. just 
building a garage on your land and the neighbor agreeing to that small easement. I don't see what the problem is with that. Patrick actually would like to add something to the conversation. Sure. I apologize. When I was on mute to start, I just want to confirm that the oath has been given to the witness. Okay. Oaths were not given. No. Thank you. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> What I should have done before we started was to have indicated that this is the Board of Adjustments and we are the County Commissioners acting as the Board of Adjustments. Um, and therefore, we're, this is a quasi-judicial zoning hearing that we're having or discussion at this point. Um, except as otherwise provided by this chapter, that is, uh, North Carolina General Statute 160D-406 and specifically, um, I ran off 460D-705, which is the general statute that we're, we're dealing with. Um, and you understand this is a recorded meeting, which is why I'm going through all this even after it should have been, it should have been at the very first of the meeting. Yes, sir. Um, we can vary from the ordinances um, if there's good cause, but you have to meet four separate requirements in order to vary from the variance uh, or to have a variance. Uh, one is unnecessary hardship, which would result from the strict application of the regulation. Two, the hardship results from conditions that are particular to this property Three, hardship did not result from any actions taken by you, the applicant, or the property owner, and you are the applicant and the property owner. Uh, and four, request for the variance is consistent with the spirit, purpose, and intent of the regulation, such that public safety is secured and substantial justice is achieved. So you have to meet those four requirements. So. Uh, what you need to do after you're sworn in is to address those four issues for us to approve a variance. All right. Now, having said that, well, I've heard it enough times I shouldn't have to read it. <laughs> do you swear under oath? That you're going to give the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God. So help me, God. All right. Thank you. Now, if you will start from the beginning and, and tell us how, why, how you meet those four variances or requirements. Okay. okay. Uh, what was I trying to the first one? All four. Um. Unnecessary hardship that would result in a, uh, if we comply with the strict regulation of the ordinance? Well, it's, uh, it's just like my, la la like my letter stated that uh, as far as getting the uh, vehicles out of, this, out of sight and as far as uh, keeping a clean uh, area. Um, and also, um, I'm, saying Cleveland. I'm trying to keep everything together here. You, you're asking that it, I make sure you, you the question that you're asking. You're asking two questions or one. Okay. Um, yeah, really, I shouldn't be directing you at okay. uh, right. a necessary hardship that would result if we comply with the strict compliance with the regulation. What hardship would you receive? Um, that I wouldn't be able to. Uh, keep up, like I said, everything, so all my vehicles and stuff will be set out outside and they, and I want to kind of keep it in a neat place and um, um, as far as the appearance, as far as the, uh, if it don't happen, then I guess my biggest thing would be why would, you know, why not? I don't understand why it shouldn't happen. I don't 
is there any safety reason that you might need this facility, the addition? Uh, yeah, I would like to keep all safety reasons would be I'd like to keep uh, vehicles out of out of uh, out of out of public, out of the view, and and away from uh, even people coming up. You know. And Which Sunday night have been a complication without a garage. Well, Sunday night. <laughs> and, Mr. Yeah. And, and our legal counsel will uh, direct me to quit leading you, I think. <laughs> oh, yeah, it would. Yeah. Yeah, the storms and so forth. And yeah. It would. And go into more detail. You started talking about the dimensions of the property and the location. Uh, that are particular to this property. Why is that an issue? The location of, of uh, where I'm putting it at is, is that what you're asking? Yes. Sir. Uh, it's, it's it was for the the driveway and and so forth. Everything goes well. It's, it's that there that and as far as uh, if you put it there, you wouldn't have no issues with uh, any uh, runoff or anything of a problem because of the uh, of the way the drainage is. Your architect, and I assume, Ms. Connell, I should have put you under oath as well. Um, she put her hand there. She put her hand here. I saw her. <laughs> Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth to help you God? Yes, sir. All right, and all the testimony you previously gave is truthful? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, your architect, gave in great detail some information about why you could not put it on the other side of the house and yes, things of that sort. Why do you want to discuss that? Well, number one is, is to be, uh, if you build it on that side, it's because of the, the layered contour of the land. It would dump all the water into my neighbors. If I put a driveway there, she would have a pond in there because of the way there would be manly, just about manly impossible to get the water without cutting up a big trench between the driveway and so forth, and and he like he stated it was a ingress problem, I believe, and it's just you have to redo the it be coming through the bedroom and it would just it, it's not even feet. You just have to keep build, building on to make something work. That, Have you done anything to worsen or to move the property lines or any any of that sort of thing? Nothing. nothing. All right. Thirty years and ain't done nothing. To try to build this garage. Right. We've got a copy of your deed, so I know you've owned it for quite a while. Uh, and the variance uh, is that is if this is allowed, is it going to change the nature and the purpose of the of this subdivision? I think it would. As far as the is it, will there be a negative impact? Um, no, sir. It would not be a negative impact. It would be a positive impact because, like I had stated, the vehicles would would be up covered. But you could keep it neater in the front, and uh, I think it would be a big thing for lawnmowers and stuff. And you wouldn't have to worry about stuff out, you know, no. sheds, stuff like that. If you're talking about beautifying something, that that would, I believe, it would help. Is your existing Elements driveway can. there and your garage is going to be right there? Right there so into the driveway. You don't have to grade or do nope. anything. Come on. That's no, ma'am. Everything is. That's, that's why I did it. Is it cement or gravel? It's cement. Oh, I have gravel. I wish I had cement. <laughs> Patrick, do we need a motion to approve? How do we handle this? A motion to approve? I've got that. Yes, yeah, so you would need a motion to approve or uh, disapprove it, and I believe I put. You did. Um, I've got that. You all have a copy of what you're packing for. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Turner, any questions? Uh, I have one, Mr. Dearman. The um, looking at your architect's letter. There's a large drop in grade in the backyard, making moving the garage further back impractical for circulation back into the house. Do you know what? I don't understand what that means. Circulate is that water circulation or air circulation? Do you know what that is? I, I'm not sure. Uh, 
sure, but if you moved it back, you would have a, I guess it would be because I have a, a patio there, a concrete slab. Okay. And if you moved it back, it would make, you know, it would make water into that area. Oh, can you just describe the topography in the back of your yard? Can you describe the slope in the back of your yard? How deep is it? How, is yeah, just kind of how how steep is it? How how big is it? Do you have runoff on it now? Back from down from mm -hmm. it, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma from the back of your property to the front. No, no. <clears throat> from the front to the back. From the front to Thank the back. You. Yes, sir. From the front to the back. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I got a question for Ms. Cattle. If that'd be appropriate. Absolutely. Uh, Ms. Cattle, what could you did the planning um, the did your staff look at the slope issue in the backyard? And can you tell me about about that? Staff look, did look at slopes. Slope didn't seem to be, and I've driven out to the site. The slope is not dramatic uh, like some other portions and properties have been. It would be feasible to do a slight build up or something to make it very level very easily. And can you tell me again the, the reason for the recommendation for denial? Because there are other opportunities on the property without having to have this waiver. Um, did you mention something about the septic tank? I didn't quite catch that. What planning board members suggested was the septic tank in the rear, should you build this house or build this garage attached to the house, yeah. getting to the right side could in fact crush some of the septic tank just trying to get past the lines to the tank. Whereas the most practical way to get to that septic is on the left side where the garage is being proposed. So it could create a hardship even getting to repair a septic tank in the rear going to the right side instead of the left. Uh, is that not an issue if you move the garage back? You're saying that you could actually get some equipment because you could meet that 10 foot setback. You could get by the side of the garage if you pushed it back a little bit and could still meet the requirements from well and septic by state law, even if you did push it back a little bit. Do you know how much you'd have to push it, the garage back in order to meet the 10 foot line? I think they measured it the five to seven foot back. Um, Katie, can you pull up that map? We have, we can pull up the map, but it looked like five to seven feet back with the architectural drawings that he showed of the dimensions could push that to where it could be set back. You see the um, the neighbor, uh, Mr. Dearman, is that your fence or the neighbor's fence? The neighbor's fence. So the neighbor has the fence up there and should they push it, you can see the lateral lines where the septic tank is there in red. So if he pushed it not quite flush with the front of his house and pushed it back just enough and squared the corner a little bit different on the design, then they could meet the 10 foot setback without a waiver. Show where those lines are again, please. The red lines or your septic lines? I got it, I see it, yeah. What's the building? A storage building? In the middle of the lines? That? Yes, yes. Okay. Mr. Dearman, do you have a sense of the cost difference of if you move the garage back five or ten feet versus if you make it flush with the front of your house? No, I don't um, because I didn't, when I looked at, when you saw about moving it back, I looked at how much it would actually block the area from the, from the uh, patio. And, and, and for us, you saw not get to the back for any kind of problems. You still talking about, I was telling, I'm still telling you that you could service the septic tank through the garage and it drops right, right behind it, the deck itself with a line. And you don't have to have a tank back there. Matter of fact, it's not long ago I had my tank pumped and I didn't realize how close it was to the back of the, I suppose I got it back, it's gonna be a, of access back door there as well. And if you come out, you open the garage, and the line will go through the through the garage and drop off at the back of the deck right there and that's what I'm Can you enlarge that uh, left hand side of the screen? A little less so we can see the septic lines. Thank you. Yeah, it looks like the drain's coming out of the house right along the line of the uh, patio and would be right behind where the garage would be if it was moved back, might be under it. I don't know, where were they, where were you recommending, or where was planning recommending moving the garage back to? Just sliding it back a few feet to where that lot gets a little bit wider. I think he's got in here the septic proposal. 
on my page here. I'm just looking at the size of the vehicle that's parked closest to the rear. If you move that on the on a scale back and had a garage to encompass it, you'd almost be on top of a drain so coming out of the house in the septic tank, wouldn't you? Where he's proposing to put that on the um, environmental health permit, you've got 16 foot from the proposed site to the first line. So he has to be 10 foot from that first line, so he has six foot to play with. Okay, say that again then. So on your environmental health permit in your packet, you've got 16 feet from where he's proposing the garage to where the actual first septic line is there. So from the back of the garage, right. the back of the proposed back garage. Back of the proposed garage. And so you only need to be 10 foot. So he's got six additional feet to, that he could still meet state law. And any drop-offs. Katie, can you put contours up there as well? I think she can pull contour, five foot contours, every five foot, it shows a contour of what the drop off is, so you can see that as well. Uh, you've got a septic tank somewhere, and you've also got a, and I've got what it's called, what's the leveling box uh, with septic tanks? The lateral lines, you mean? Yeah, they go into the lateral, into the lines themselves. Right, so I don't think we have that data with the environmental health permit on this one, because it's an older permit. There you go, there you can see your contours. Up by the house, Katie, I cannot see that number. What does that say? Uh, 680 at the front of the house mm -hmm. and 675 is the one back there. 70, 675, 680. So you got a five-foot drop from front to back, which is kind of normal. That's probably good enough to roll water to keep it from getting into his house. Mr. Dimmer, my last question is, is, I understand the testimony that if you if you build a garage and move it back five to ten feet from on the side of the house you want to put it on, that you can meet that ten foot requirement. So, according to the law, as I understand it, you've got to show an unnecessary hardship. Why complying or why asking for the restriction? I'm sorry. Why complying with the law would be a hardship, unnecessary hardship. Mm -hmm. So, how would you answer? What is the unnecessary hardship of moving the garage back five to ten feet so that you can? still meet the 10 foot setback requirement well one thing was like i said saying i don't she said that it probably won't flood back in that area but if it pulls to the front i'll pull it back there it's not saying it's stating that it you know i have to figure out some way to get that concrete to make sure that water doesn't back up to the house right there and there's a there's a pad with a, a um, I think it's like a 12, 12 inches down pad. It's, so it'd be, it's like 20, it's like uh, 10 by 16 or something like that. Could you just build that up with additional filler to make it? Yeah, but if you build it up, you're going to have to throw it down this way. Is the, uh, is the house on a slab or on a foundation? It's on a foundation. On the left, when I'm looking over there in the left corner where it looks like you don't have any grass, is that where water accumulates near your septic tank? It looks like a, just a bunch of sand, right where the red lines end on the left side. Right in there? I don't think so, no. But it is a, there is a place there, but it, as far as um, water, that's not, it's not a growing there. It is grass. We do have grass in some things. But your, your lot does drain off effectively for you. Yes. yes okay. I know no matter how dry summer is, in my parents' backyard where the septic tank is, the grass is always green. Mm -hmm. And I just figure that's got a lot to do with that. Planning board's recommendation was to move the garage to the to the left side of the house, where, so he would have to enter his house through a bedroom from the garage. Then, is that correct? The recommendation was actually just to slide it back a little Wait, bit pardon? and to slide it back on slide the same back, side not and to modify right. one corner of it. Um, well, if you modify that corner, I'm going to be a big one in there. And that's another thing too. I won't be able. I have to come. If I have two vehicles sitting in the garage and I modify that corner, how do I, how do I get that vehicle yeah, to they turn? Want, they wouldn't want to modify size. 
they were modifying just kind of the curve of the front roof. Well, that's why I'm going to the curve. I'm going to have to be able to drive into there, around there. If I have anything parking in in front of the garage, I end up, I'd get around to that corner. If I got a straight entrance in there, and if I modify it to uh, at a 45 or 30 degree angle, how do I get into that? into the garage. I'm not sure the angles what they're talking about just the fingers <coughs> on it so that there's no extra protrusion on the side to meet setbacks. The planning board wanted to move the garage back what distance? Um, they knew they had six foot to play with. They thought five foot would work. I mean without putting the pen to paper just looking at it, they thought the five foot would fix it when we were measuring. Do you mm -hmm. have any idea how much additional money that's gonna cost you? Well, not really, but I know I'm looking at the appearance and I looked at that and I said, wow, who wants a, who will want Was that known? I mean, don't even look. But you, you're going up to Springfield, I mean, Midway Church, and you look, you're going to see this. What the world? You know, someday somebody might want this thing. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Scott with Campbell Teague is giving you all the direction that financial or aesthetic appearance can yeah. be considered for this. Okay. Just curious, as a citizen. Yep. This question is, are we setting a precedent that we really want to set as a board? And that's something for all five of us. Well, that, I get, that's a very valid question, John, but everybody is an individual and everybody's situation is totally different. And I think we always need to look at each situation as it's totally different to meet the best needs of the citizen. So that, it's a double-sided coin, I get it. And that's basically the whole point of a Board of Adjustments is to be able to take a look at something and make an exception where we believe an exception is necessary. Um. The board, at this point, we don't have a motion. Would someone like to make a motion? And if so, address those four separate issues in your motion. I'll make a motion that we accept his request to place his garage. We have approval from the uh, neighbor for position of the garage. Um, there's evidence, he's presented evidence that the garage, relocating the garage will, in a, in, it will cause a problem for water flow toward the back of his house. Um, uh, and uh, apparently, the, something about the appearance of the house. I think you're saying something about yeah. the appearance from the road would give it up. It's on a cul-de-sac, I think, right? It's on a cul-de-sac. Um, so from a, what you're saying basically is you think from a remarketing perspective, mm -hmm. it would cause a problem to it move the garage back in the, in the appearance of the house. Is that your motion? That's my motion. I'll second it. Four conditions are, one, water flow is one of yours. What are the other three? Um, let's see. Well, hardship, let's see. I think the hardship issues addressed in the, in the positioning of the garage from appearance and remarketing of the property. Um, And appearance on the neighborhood. Uh, let's see. Uh, number four is request variance and consistent with the spirit, purpose, and intent of the regulation. Um, I don't see a problem with public safety in this at all. So uh, number three, hardship did not result from action taken by the applicant. It, it didn't result from his action. He uh, didn't know at the time, I guess he bought the house that he wanted to put a garage there. You've been in he it how long? No, 30 years. <laughs> now he does. Yeah. So, um, it's not his fault. Motion to second, is there any other discussion? Um, Mr. Chairman, I, I don't, see a big deal with a three-foot request especially when the neighbor approves it but regrettably I, I, I can't support the motion because I just don't think it meets the elements of the law I, I, I don't think it meets the elements of the law and I just respectfully suggest that if you move the garage back five or six feet that it could meet the restriction and I don't I haven't heard evidence that 
moving it back five to six feet is an unnecessary hardship as the law requires. So I, just respectfully, I just, I just couldn't vote for it for that reason. And I'm in agreement with that as well. I would really like to give you the variance, but I don't think it complies with our requirements. Ms. Lashley, you want to say anything? No, I've heard enough. All right. I'm good. Are we ready for a vote? All in favor of the variance signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? No. Nay. It requires a firm I, fist I meant vote, to say does it yes. not? <laughs> You're in favor? Yes, thank you. Tom. Yes, Commissioner. Uh, four fifths vote is required. Four fifths? Correct. Which equals? Gee whiz. Is that four? That's a hard five? hurdle to get over right or there, three sir. Three or four of them. That's a hard hurdle to get over. I don't care who you are. I thought majority. I think it's going to be four. I didn't know that, sir. I didn't know it was a 40, 80% uh, has got to, hell, that means everybody's got to vote yes. Four fifths vote, yeah. Pretty much. I don't like uh, that at all. That's not how this country works. Sir, I'm, I'm sorry it fails. Uh, I would, I can't give you legal advice, <laughs> but I would get, go back to your architect and see if you can't work things out. Well, I went to back to my architect to answer your question, and that's the reason why he wrote the letter. But he said, you know, there can't be, this can't be the only situation in this county that, I, you know, we just did a project in Greensboro and it was five foot and we, the ten foot caught us off guard. And, and Mr. Turner's pointing out that we have to follow the law. I understand. Uh, so we don't have I understand. as much wiggle room as three of it indicated would like to give you. Yeah. It's just not okay. possible. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Anything else? No, sir. That's all from staff. All right. Uh, do we have a motion to adjourn this quasi-judicial meeting? Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries.